Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is about the Unreal Damage System. Um, it kind of goes alongside some of the physics and collision stuff, uh, but not necessarily. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a standalone video in, in that sense. Okay, so the first thing I should say is that you could do all your own damage stuff. You don't have to rely on the Unreal uh, Unreal system, but why would you want to reinvent the wheel if this system's good enough for you? Okay. And all it does is it does a transmission of the concept of damage from some, some objects that cause damage to some objects that um, receive damage. Okay. So what it doesn't do for you is give you the concept of health and actually work out when uh, a character has died or when an object should uh, break because it's received uh, enough damage. Uh, it, so it's it's just effectively a number that's passed from one object to another to say uh, there is some damage. So uh, the setup I've got here is uh, is abnormal for me is that I'm actually using the first person template. Uh, you can see it on the floor there, um, and I've uh, created a couple of things in here to help me along. So the first is uh, one of the cubes that's just kicking around in this template. Um, I've turned it into a blueprint so that I can get it to respond to damage. And this is the thing that I'm, we're going to take as the, um, as the target, the victim of our damage, if you like. Um, and the other thing I've created is a bomb, and that's this little, um, <coughs> uh, little cone shape here. So let's have a, a look at what's going on inside the bomb. Um, it's, in fact, a repeatable bomb. It doesn't destroy itself when it explodes. It keeps going. Uh, so I've got a timer and a timer interval in there, and it's doing the classic thing of uh, incrementing the timer from the uh, event tick. Uh, when it gets to the interval size, which is set by default to five seconds, that can be changed. Um, I probably won't. Uh, five seconds is reasonable. Then uh, it resets the timer, and we have uh, the execution passes out here. Um, and then uh, what we're going to get is uh, we spawn a little explosion at the at the point of the cone to give us a visual indication that it's exploding, and we also play a sound um, which is going to be played at that location, uh, which is an explosion. Okay. Um, this does not yet do any damage, so we'll come back into this when we uh, talk about radial damage, which is the kind of damage we're going to want from that. Okay, so let's close that. Um, so, let's get into our cube. We want it to uh, respond when we have damage. Open the full blueprint editor. Here we go. And there are three, at uh, least, events uh, that can respond to damage. Uh, three. There we go. So you can see, can event any damage, event point damage, and event radial damage. So we'll start with the event damage. Uh, sorry, any damage. And so any damage that's been caused to this uh, to this box is going to respond here. Now, uh, as I said before, what we might want to do is to have some setting and to accumulate damage over time, or to have some kind of health setting, which we decrease from other damage when it comes in. I'm not going to do any kind of setup for that. All I'm going to do is respond to the damage by uh, printing it out to the screen. So print string. And uh, it's automatically plugged that into the duration rather than the. Um, uh, uh, there we go. Rather than the actual thing that we're printing. So that, when you're, that receives some damage, that should print. Okay, let's go and shoot at it and see what happens. Okay, so the first person shooter uh, template has got this gun and we can shoot um, projectiles. Oh, that's our bomb going off as well, by the way. Um, but nothing's happening. The cube is, uh, seems to not be responding. Uh, and the reason is, it's not actually, although it's been moved about by the bullets that are hitting it, it's not receiving any damage. And that's because the bullet itself is not yet set up to do some damage. So we're going to get into, now oh, that's the wrong place, uh, into the blueprints. And we've got our projectile here. And this has uh, an event hit, so it detects when it's hit something. Um, and it uh, has an impulse to the thing that it hits, which is how it kind of moves stuff when it hits it, and then it destroys itself. So we're going to interject uh, before it destroys itself. 
we're going to get it to apply some damage. So I'm just going to do apply damage. And there are four here. There's apply damage, which is a generic damage uh, causer. There's apply point damage, which is what we'll switch to after we've explored apply damage. And then there's the radial damage, but we'll turn to the bomb when we do the radial damage. Okay, so we'll just apply damage here. Uh, sit on there. So it, it needs to know what actor is going to receive the damage, and uh, the uh, projectiles hit something, so it's the other uh, element from that hit. Just to be plugged in there. And the base damage, uh, we're just going to give it 10. The, the numbers don't really matter at this point, because the numbers would be relative to whatever health something has. You see, there's a few more things here. There's event instigator. Uh, so you can say which object actually has, has directly caused the damage. But there's also the damage causer. Uh, this is this takes a player. Uh, um, it's an actor reference, but it wants to know uh, if which player has caused the damage or if it's been caused by um, an AI or something. So uh, to give them credit uh, if that needs to be done. Okay, and um, we've got a damage type class here, and I have, I confess, no clue about that. So uh, so it's going to apply the damage. I hope that is going to work now. We're just going to uh, compile that and click play, honestly, and shoot at the box. And now we can see 10 damage. Every time we hit that box, 10 damage. 10 damage, right. So I promised I would uh, expand this, uh, change it so that we have point damage. So point damage is damage that is applied at a specific point in space. So you can do kind of, um, you can do damage on different parts of an object or if the direction's important. Um, so it, it's only worth uh, using this, sorry, uh, damage. Apply point damage. It's only worth using this this if you actually want that information. Um, once again, the damage actor needs to come out from here. Other. And we've got a base damage. We're going to up this to 20 for a base damage for this. Uh, hit from direction. That's going to be the uh, hit normal. And hit info. Well, why not? We've got a hit here, so that will plug directly into that. We can give it all that information in case it wants to need it. Um, so if we go back to our um, game here, and we're going to shoot at it, um, we've got 20 damage. Um, and in fact, let's uh, add something here. So that's picking up on the damage as generic damage. Uh, let's go back into our box. Where was our box? Here it is. Um, so that picks up on any kind of damage. But if we want specific uh, to pick up that specific information, which is from the point damage, we want the point damage one. So damage event point damage, and that gives us all that point damage information. So I'm going to do print string, and I'm going to pick up um, the damage. I'm going to turn that into a string and unplug that because I'm then going to concatenate and get some more. Yeah, so append, this allows us to string, string strings together. Um, damage at, and I'm going to get the location. There's an extra pin in here. Hit location, and now just plug that result into the output string there. Okay, so let's go see that in action. Uh, play, and this should respond to both the um, the generic damage events and the point damage events. There we go. And we've got the location hitting it. Right, let's move on. Let's move into the bomb. Um, so the bomb has got this setup where uh, it's got various things that happen and uh, we can take something out from here because this is when it's exploding. And we're going to do apply damage. Sorry, apply radial damage. Apply radial damage. So there are two choices here. I'm just going to show you the the two apply radial damage with fall off. So the fall off gives you a more complicated um, uh, sphere around where the damage is being created. It gives you a base damage and a minimum damage. Uh, they both need origin. 
You've got an inner radius and an outer radius and a fall off to be defined. But this one does do uh, a more simple fall off. Uh, so we will use this one. Uh, we're going to make the base damage for this 30. And uh, the location for the damage is the same as the location of the um, of the cone itself. Uh, the damage radius, we're going to make that 10 uh, meters. So that's 1,000 centimeters. Uh, you're able to put something, uh, other information in here. You've got the damage causer and the instigator by controller as kind of similar to what we've had before. There's also an array input here. You can tell it to ignore certain actors um, and this uh, is a way of, uh, for example, disabling friendly fire. Uh, if you want to do so, you need to put together all the actors that you want to ignore it and put it in there. So let's go see uh, what work, uh, if that works. Um, so let's click play. Uh, we're going to wait for the explosion. Boom. And there we can see it's just doing that um, receive any damage there. It's giving us 22. Uh, uh, point damage. As I moved it away, it's doing less because it's getting further out from the center. 13, so the damage falls off uh, as you get further out. Uh, so we're just going to do one more thing in the cube, which is to get it to respond specifically to the radial damage as well. So uh, damage. Uh, so if you want to know information about the radial damage, then you've got this. Again, you've got uh, the origin, the hit info, uh, etc. And we'll, we're just going to print a string in here. Print string. And I'm just going to say radial damage. Okay. Nearly there. Let's give this a go. Five seconds. Boom. And we can see this radial damage. That's the point damage. And the the numbers that we're getting on its own line, is it responding to any damage every time? So you have two sides to the system of damage every time. Um, you've got uh, you've got to have the uh, uh, whatever's causing the damage to tell uh, the system that you're causing the damage. And so in order to make a, a damage system work in your own real projects, you need to think about both ends of the the process. You need to think about the what. What are the uh, things that are going to cause damage and what type of damage you want? You've got the three choices. You've got the generic damage, you've got the point damage, and you've got the radial damage. And then at the other end, you've got objects uh, or characters which are going to be on the receiving end of that damage, who are your victims, if you like. Um, and you need to be scripting both ends of this process. And that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.